So, hello everybody again. We are back uh, after the first short break and now we are going to start almost the presentation of uh, Thomas Fiedler, one of the biggest SAP community heroes. He's uh, everywhere. He is on Twitter, he is on every Stammtisch and every inside track. And now he'll give us an overview about ABAP in Eclipse. So Thomas, are you ready to go? Yes. So then you should now be able to share. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Do you see do you see everything? Yes. Okay, very good. So uh, thank you very much also from my side for inviting me to ABOPConf. I'm really honored uh, to be part of that um, first ABOPConf uh, this year. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to present some stuff from the ABOP development uh, tools from ADT. And uh, first of all, I want to start with a, a little view into the history. So ADT gets uh, 10 next year, so 10 years already ABAP development. But with the whole thing, we started, I think, already 20 years ago. Um, and it was similar to the, um, to the launch of the ABAP con. So it was also maybe a stupid idea. Uh, back uh, in the beginning of that century where we said, okay, um, so we had uh, Java development there going on in SAP and we had a lot of development environments starting with JBuilder and then we moved over to, to Eclipse and then we had the stupid idea, why not put a small screenshot into, into the Eclipse environment just to visualize how an ABAP development can look like. So I said, it was just a, a mock-up and then, yeah, now, after all these years, you see today that this is really uh, happening. And yeah, in the meantime, I think we can really say that ADT is the uh, development environment for the ABAP. So we still have the SE80 available for sure. But I think when looking on all the modern uh, developments happening with CDS, RAP, all these things, uh, it's really only available uh, in ADT. And yeah. This is also the reason why I'm here today. So what is this all about today? I want to give a small introduction. So the first uh, things that you have to do in Eclipse in order to find all your things, how you can work with the IDE. But as Søren said, I will also put some uh, tips and tricks, maybe some things which are hidden under specific menu items, which you don't see quite obvious. So this will also be part of that. So I'm already here in my Eclipse IDE. Um, I have installed it. First, you have to install the Eclipse from eclipse.org page. So, and then you have to put the other development tools on top of it via an update site. So this is very easy process. It takes you several, several minutes, five to 10 minutes until this is running. And yeah, overall Eclipse, comes with a very flexible user interface. So a lot of configuration possibilities. So it's not that static that you know from SE80 where you more have this classic transactional work. So you do something and then you do another thing and then you go back. So it's really a lot of things uh, in parallel. And you see already uh, on the left-hand side here, this is the Project Explorer. Project Explorer in Eclipse is more or less my control center where, con where I control all my work. So it's, let's say, a combination of the sub logon pad. So you see here the systems where I am connected to. And it's also the repository browser from the SE80, let's say. That means you can also inspect the systems, the objects which are in the system. And this is done via the Project Explorer. As said, you see here all the systems where I'm connected on. There are several cloud systems in there. There are some on-premise systems. I even have older on-premise systems. And sometimes you also have customer systems here for us when we're working in the support or you when you're in a, in a customer project, for example. And this also, 
this list gets very long over the time. And therefore, we offer possibility to cluster these things here. And this is under this button here. And we call it working sets. A working set is just a cluster, let's say, from several development objects. I already have defined some of them here. For example, here I have only my cloud systems here, these two, but I can also switch to the on-prem systems and then I see the system. So it's quite handy here to more or less configure my, my working place a little bit better. I go back to the cloud environment here um, and then I can go on and look what do I have in the system. Also the good thing is here, um, I'm already uh, connected to the system here. And this is also stored here. So I can just open the, um, the uh, repository tree here. And then I see already, okay, what, what's in there. I see something like packages, this I know, and there's also objects. So I can start here and look what's in there, favorite packages. I think that's clear. So these are all the packages where I'm working on. I can add additional packages so that I get really a, uh, yeah, a, a view on my objects where I work on. Then you also see other things here, the released objects. This is what Frank and Boris mentioned in the keynote. Um, in the cloud, it is only allowed to use uh, released objects. So it's not that you can use uh, every Boolean that you find in the system. So it's uh, that we uh, specifically uh, released uh, objects and you see also a bunch of objects. And this is only a basis system here for sure. In the real S4HANA uh, systems, you will find much more APIs here. But this is more or less the, um, yeah, the, the objects that you can use uh, in your cloud developments here. Okay, go a little bit further here. You see also other uh, object pack packages here. And these are the so-called repository trees. This is already one of the, my main features, main favorite features that I have um, because there it's very flexible to create new folders here in order to display specific objects. You, you find it here when you right click on the project, there is an entry new other repository. And then you see already here some examples that you can use. And one of, one of the latest features I would say is that it's also possible to display the inactive objects. So you can click on that and you see what's happening. This screen's open here up. And this is now a configuration page for this repository. So here I want to see, okay, only my inactive objects, only for my user. You can also specify other users if you would like. And you can also add object name patterns. For example, you only want to see objects with a specific namespace or things like that. And here you can also configure how you would like to see the objects. In my case, I want to cluster it for packages. No, I only want to cluster it for object types here. And then I click finish and then I get a new tree here and I see all my inactive objects here, which I'm currently uh, working on. So this is also a nice feature, I think. For that here, this is my example. And you already see uh, that I'm a basis guy because in the basis, we only knew um, two business processes. One is the flight applications and the other one is a calculator. So for my um, demo, I want to use the uh, calculator which is a very um, sophisticated uh, calculator, um, as you will see later on. And here I also created um, a so-called repository tree where I only see objects that belong to that specific package here. So this is quite handy. So I can also organize my repository tree a little bit concerning the, um, the projects where I'm working on. Okay. Low, look a little bit into this. So you see here the, all the object types. And now I think you are already a little bit familiar with what's the, what's the idea of that. So it's really the, the access to all the objects where you want to work on. So you can open here, for example, you want to go for classes here and all these things you see directly from here. Another option is sometimes you have options that you really need very often. And for this, we also have an option to position this as a favorite object. So it's also an additional folder here. So it is also optional. You don't have to use it. And in that case, I have positioned the, the starting point of my demo demonstration here. And I just can double click on that. And then this opens on the right hand side in the editor. So this is uh, the first thing here. Um, uh, 
yeah, what do we have on the right hand side? This is a this is a class. And for sure, the first thing that you want to do in the development area, you want to inspect a little bit uh, your environment. That means you want to also look a little bit what other objects do we have here. For example, here, um, I want to see, okay, here is an, an, an interface. I can just open that. By the way, here you see um, on the screen here, this is just for demonstration purposes, a very nice feature um, of Eclipse, with, which automatically visualize all the keyboard shortcuts that I'm using during the, the demonstration. Because it's also clear, you will see this when you work with Eclipse, that most of the stuff is more efficient when you're doing this via uh, keyboard shortcuts. There are a lot of keyboard shortcuts. We also have um, um, small uh, keyboard uh, shortcut list for you prepared in the help um, content that you can use. Um, yeah, and that's that's really more efficient than just using the mouse. Okay, that's, now you see already, okay, I opened a, a second object and this is in parallel to the first one. So it's not like in the GUI where the first object um, vanishes. So it's really that you can work with several objects here in in, in the, the editor is we can also open here, for example, what I, do I have here, the data element, and the data element editor comes up. And also go back, let's see, okay, I have also here a calculator class that you also see. Or here, this, this object here. Then you see the, over the time you have a lot of these uh, tabs here, which is quite easy, you can just jump from every tab to every tab. But sometimes um, you also want um, to um, maybe do this also via the keyboard shortcuts. Therefore, we have the uh, shortcut control E, and then you see all the tabs available here in a small pop-up in the editor. And it's also very easy then to navigate here um, to, to the objects on, on the tabs here. I'm sure you will not work um, um, all the time with all the tabs open. So that's for sure also the possibility here to close the tabs, just right click on a tab and then you see several options. And that I want to just close all the tabs on the right side here. And then I'm only having this one here. So that's, that's already the, the basic, let's say introduction here. What you can also do, you can also open a development object, not just by clicking here in the repository tree. So we also have um, an open uh, object dialog, which comes when you press Control Shift A, and then you already see here in the history what objects I already used in the past. So, for example, here you can open here the ALV, the ALV grid. I think you know, all know this class here, which is a little bit longer than my demonstration classes. And then this is also opened here in ADT. So this dialogue is really very essential. And it also gives you some kind of filter capabilities. For example, when you only want to search for data elements, then you can uh, filter this uh, dialogue here. And maybe you only want to look for Boolean uh, data types. And there are also other options, for example, here. And these are the same things that we already have seen in the um, repository tree options. So you can also use the same filter criteria here. And then you see, this is, I think, already mentioned in the first uh, keynote by uh, Tobias that, yeah, the ABAP has quite a lot of Booleans in there. Good. Having said that, going back um, to my uh, demo class, I think. Um, You've seen navigation is really one of the yeah, most popular things in the ABAP development. You know this from as the AD, so you navigate through the editors. But in fact, this is not really what you want to do because in fact, you only want to have the information, what kind of stuff you can do with the related objects. So for example, with this interface here, and why, why should you navigate and, 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 and look on the source code when you can just click F2 on it and then you see all the content right here in a small pop-up. That means you don't lose your context of your development work and you just see the information uh, here in the editor. You can do the same thing here, for example, for the calculator class, which is our main object. And then you see also here, there are link, link uh, possibilities here. So we also offer the possibility here to navigate within this screen here. 
And this is also quite nice because you don't have to open all the objects here when you want just want to have the information that you need here. And for example, here, this is the, the visualization of the ABAP documentation. And here we also have links where you can click on it. So this is, for example, here, um, a database table that we're using. And if you don't like this pop-up display, you can also extend this here and show this in a view. So you just click on that icon here, and then you see all the information here in a view. And this is also very nice because when you click on another object here, then you directly see the object information, the element info of that object, which are currently marked in the editor. This is, I think, also very helpful, this feature. Okay, this is to inspect a little bit my objects. Now, usually what you also want to know is to want to inspect a little bit the environment of that class. So what, I, what are my relationships to other objects? And for that use case, I want to introduce one of our new friends, the so-called Relation Explorer. The Relation Explorer works also very interactive with the uh, editor in focus here. And what you see here, these are all the objects which I'm using in my class. So you see, I have here a relationship to two interfaces and I'm also using um, this type group here. So these are all the objects that I'm using. So maybe you now you ask yourself, hmm, it's also interesting to know which objects are using my class. And this is also available here. So we can just switch the context here and you see the, uh, the using objects. And there you see, okay, this, this class here is used by uh, this demo class here. Maybe I move over to that. Maybe then we see a little bit more uh, using objects. So here also see it's very interactive. You directly see it's more or less the, the values that you, that you see here. So it's not that you have to trigger this manually. It's just here in this, uh, in this uh, relation explorer visible for you. This does not mean that we do not provide an, a values list as a known functionality. No, this is also available here. So you can also just in the editor when you want to know the, the, the usages of that interface, you can also trigger this directly from here, from the editor. And then you see all the, the usages of that here also in a small view underneath the editor page. Good. This was the Relation Explorer. Now, sometimes or very often, uh, you not just work in one system. So you also have seen this in the, in the um, Package Explorer, where we have several systems in parallel. Therefore, it's uh, quite natural that we also offer possibilities to open this object here in another system. So I just can just right click here in the editor and I say open in project. And there I see all my other projects. For that, I want to look into, yeah, okay, this is an on-premise system where I also have this example in there. And then you don't have to log on to that system, go to the repository, it just opens this object directly uh, in that editor. And it's not that we offer the possibility to open this object, no. You can also directly do a remote comparison. This is um, here in the compare dialog, compare with project, this one here. And then you directly see the differences from that objects um, in one system compared with the other one. And you cannot just compare it. It's even better. You can also use this functionality here on top of the screen to copy uh, stuff from one from one pack from one system to another one. So it's also very nice to use this when you want to migrate um, developments from one system to another one. So this is available here. Good. So that's for that, how you can um, figure out a little bit what's the environment. Now you also know that every object had some of, yeah, typical object properties like who created that object, when was the last change, all these things you find here in the so-called properties view. I want to enlarge this a little bit. And there you see all the, the informations uh, that, you, that you need for a first yeah, glimpse what are the changes on these objects. There are also specific things here for classes, uh, for sure, all these kind of things. For example, you have a message class linked to that. 
And what is also new here, and now we're coming back to the uh, notion of, uh, of the released objects, you also have the possibility as a customer to use this release concept as well for your objects. That means you can also define released objects for your own development. So for example, when you want to, to allow that this class can be used by others in your company, you can just define here release contract as well for this class, and then others can use it in the development. And this is also something which is, I think, um, very good that this, this concept can also be used in your developments. Now I want to come to a new friend that we have um, in the property suite. This is this last tab, it's called transport. Transport, I think you know, all my objects that I change are put onto a transport request. But what we don't have uh, in, in Eclipse was the possibility to easily find out when I'm here in the editor, is this object locked in a transport request? What's, what's the transport where it is related on? And this pane is now gone because I just can click on that here. And then I directly see where this object currently is locked. I see here, this is my request here. I also see the description here. And I can also click on that. And then the transport organizer um, comes up where you all see the information. So you see here the tree, what are my tasks that I have? You see all the objects which are locked in there, some administration uh, information, all these kinds of things are available. And for sure, also the possibility, uh, you see, see it already here with the small icon, you can also release your developments um, in, in there. Good, that was it for the transport organizer. Now I want to come back to my uh, class and I want to show some features, how you can inspect a little bit better the content of that. So, so navigation within the object. First, the first yeah, thing I want to show is the so-called outline view. Outline displays you all the uh, things which are available in this class. So all the methods, uh, attributes, all these kinds of things. And for sure, you can also use this as, an, as a navigation capability here. That's the first thing I want to show here. Then for sure, sometimes you don't work in that uh, view. You just want to uh, work in full screen mode, then you don't have the views available. But no problem, you also have this as a so-called quick outline with control O, and then you also have the capabilities to easily navigate um, through your development objects here. Maybe you figured out there is also some kind of a breadcrumb available here. This is quite uh, handy when you're working um, here in, in, for example, when you're here in the in in if clause, then you also see um, where are my where, where I am located currently in my source code here. You can also open these things here up. And then you can also navigate here, for example, to the, to the um, race uh, statement here, to the, to the exception, um, which, I, which I caught here. This is also a very nice feature. Then for sure, um, you also want, when you're developing within a method, so you have the problem that you, don't really see the, um, the signature of that method. So yeah, for sure you can go there and press F2, but sometimes this is not, this is not uh, visual, visualized here because when you're working here, but for that we also have another um, shortcut, which is um, uh, Alt F2. And then you see the signature of the method where you're currently developing. So there's also another uh, shortcut that you can use here and this displays exactly the signature of that method uh, where you're currently working on. It's not just displaying the signature, it also gives you the documentation, maybe one word to the documentation. Maybe you've seen this already. This is also available um, since a long time now uh, that we also provide the capability to use uh, ABAP doc. Um, maybe I want to go here for the interface, then you see it a little bit better, um, that you can also use these kind of uh, capabilities here to really document directly in the source code uh, your uh, development artifacts here. And when clicking then on of two, you see all the information here that you need. Good. Then I think also one of the 
uh, very popular features and really uh, very efficient features is the tight integration with the um, ABAP language help. So I think whenever you have a question in ABAP um, on the syntax, there are two possibilities. First possibility is you ask Horst Keller uh, if you know his number, or you just click here in the editor on um, F1, and then you see um, here the documentation, the language help of that language statement. So you see, for example, I also integrated a body into uh, my calculator example. And then you see also here all the syntax uh, which is necessary to call a body here. This, for example, is also uh, interactive with the editor. When you click on that button here, then you see also that whenever you click on a new statement, then you directly see the documentation of the statements where you currently uh, have the, the cursor position. I think this is also, especially when you want to learn new syntax or you're, you're looking on source code, uh, which uses new syntax that you are not uh, familiar with, then you can use this feature here very easily to directly see the documentation um, of, that, um, of that language statement here. Good. Now I want to come a bit um, to the edit use case. So that just had a look um, what things you need in order to find all your objects, how you can navigate through the repository. But now I want to come to the edit use case. As you've already seen, uh, the calculator here is doing the, the, basic, um, the basic calculation, adding subtraction, all these kinds of things. But uh, I want to add a new uh, operation in order to calculate the square root of an object. And this is what I already have prepared in the sense. Um, so I'm using here the um, approach of test-driven development. So I start with my developments um, in the test classes here. So typically the first thing that I'm doing here is I execute the unit tests on that objects also via shortcut control shift F10. And then you see, oh, I already have some unit tests, so everything is fine, all is working perfectly. So a good starting point to extend um, the, the calculator here. I already did this beforehand. So I already created, let's say, the specification of, no, of my new method. I want to comment this out here. So what I'm doing here, yeah, I'm creating the calculator objects and I call this square root method, uh, put it in a 16 and I expect the result is four here. For sure, as this method is not implemented yet, the first thing I have to do is to create that method. So now you can maybe think about, okay, I go to the class, uh, define uh, the method, then go to the implementation part. So our, maybe you're doing this uh, today. Uh, in Eclipse, we do have, um, quick assists for that. This is also one of the yeah, really most efficient features in Eclipse. So you just press control one, and then you see the options that you have here. In that case, the system figured out, okay, there's a method which does not exist. Therefore, it's maybe a good idea to offer the option to create this method here. Choose this option here. And then a small pop-up comes up because yeah, you will see that most of the information which is necessary is already got from the source code. So you see there is a, a value as an input parameter, there is a result parameter, but for example, this the result or the data type of the result cannot be automatically detected. Therefore, I have the possibility here to enter this manually. Maybe I also want to choose another return parameter here and click save. And that's already done. And then I'm directly here in my method implementation. Again, the trick with Alt F2, and then you already see, okay, method was created, value input parameter, result a returning parameter with that type. Okay, so let's uh, do this here. So for sure we have a code completion available here. Um, I want to uh, use that functionality here. Um, I'm putting the value in there and that's already it. So you've also seen before uh, changing something, I did not hit any kind of change button or whatever. 
So this is this is gone. So in, in Eclipse, you just start uh, typing, and then the object is automatically locked, and you can start uh, uh, changing the source code. So it's no no button necessary. This does not mean that all objects are uh, locked by default. No, that's not the case. It's just when you start typing, then the object is locked. Okay, that's it already, and I can activate my objects. For activating, we also provide two options, so you can activate only the, the active, the, the object, which is in focus here in the editor, or you can also activate uh, the whole uh, workspace that I only did changes here. I just press control F3, and then the, the um, object is activated. I can, again, press control 10, and then I see that my Whoops. That my new unit test is also executed here and is green. So this is just to give you a glimpse how the working model in TDD will look like. So this is yeah very easy. Let's say here um, there are also other uh, possibilities um, in the editor. You've already seen code completion for sure, which is uh, quite handy. But we also offer um, other quick fixes here. So for example, one quick fix which is, which is quite which is very prominent here is the possibility to rename some things. So yeah, sometimes it's very easy, but you also know when you have a lot of um, relationship to other objects, maybe that's not so uh, easy. And therefore we offer here the possibility also via control one to rename um, objects here. You also see other options. Maybe the last one is not so uh, useful now, but you also can change, for example, the visibility of, of this method quite easily via, via, this, um, via this entry here. What I want to do here is for sure, um, I don't want to allow this, um, this functionality for values. Oh, I want to only allow this for values greater than zero. So I want to position uh, if clause around that. And for that, I want to use the code templates. So code templates is also a very uh, cool feature that you can use here. And in that case, okay, I, I use um, uh, this one here. And then you directly see, okay, what's happening. This block is automatically uh, integrated here. And I can just enter here um, my condition here. And also the else block. Yeah, maybe I just copy this one from here. That I put in the um, this exception here. And then you see already, oh, uh, there's automatically a marker coming up here. And this comes from the syntax check. So you also see the syntax check is automatically triggered in the background. So you don't have to press any button. So whenever you do a change, we synchronize with the with this with the other backend. And we directly show the results of the syntax check here. In that case, it's a warning because currently I don't raise this accept exception in my method here. You can imagine what I'm doing now. Just press Control One and look what the code assist or the the um, the quick assist uh, provides me here as options. In that case, I want to use here the add raising declaration and pressing again Alt F2. And then you directly see, okay, this option was added uh, to my uh, method definition here. So the thing what I want to show here is that for sure, everything in Eclipse, especially in the area of classes is source-based, What we but what we offer is a lot of additional functionality with the quick assist, with the quick fixes that makes the, the life of the developer here more efficient and more easier. So you don't have to type that much things here you can just use the, the quick, quick assist, and that's it already. For sure, what we also have is when we look here on the top, um, maybe you can also trigger the, um, the print printer. Um, so in Eclipse, it's called Formatter, but same functionality. Um, and yeah, this is, this is then also uh, executed here. Um, what you also have seen maybe is already this, this coloring here. And you know, okay, we have syntax coloring, but some of the statements have uh, different colors here. And this is also a nice feature in, in ADT because you can specify the code coloring re really 
for, for, for each statement differently. For, that, for example, in that case, I want to highlight that here I offer some um, extensibility capabilities and therefore I highlight this with a special color here. I also have it in that class, I think, where you also see that I've highlighted uh, select state, uh, SQL statements, sorry, SQL statements here also with a different color that you directly see in your code when there is something where you work on uh, with, the, with the database. Going back, okay, after the format, I have to activate again. Activation is coming up. Okay, maybe some additional uh, topics. So we've already uh, seen that is uh, possible to compare objects uh, with several system. The same thing for sure is also possible within a system. So when you want to uh, compare it with the uh, version uh, history in Eclipse, we have several options for that. We have for sure the, the classic version history, let's say, that you already know from, from SE80 world, where this is stored in an own repository in, on, on an own, so the versions which are created at transport level. But in Eclipse, we also have the so-called local history. And the local history is created every time when you're, when you're uh, storing an object or when you're saving an object in ADT. As the name local history says it already, this is only stored on your local uh, laptop here. So it's not something stored on the, on the other side. And then you can also just click there and then you directly see uh, where are my changes uh, compared to the, to the last version here, where I here added uh, a new method here, a new erasing clause here, you can also navigate here uh, through the source code uh, because all the changes here are also uh, visualized here in the in the markers area here. So this is also quite handy to use this here. Um, sometimes um, you have issues um, in the in the yeah when you're comparing when when the methods are not when the methods are not in the same order than in your, in your uh, source system, then you have the possibility here to do some kind of a, a sorting before the source code is, vis is visualized. So you can sort the methods um, here uh, alphabetically and that it's sometimes it's easier uh, to compare the, the object with each other here. For sure also the possibility here to uh, copy things from, from the history into um, the current version of the object. For sure, in that case, the other way around is not possible. So you cannot maintain uh, afterwards existing versions for sure. Good, that's it for the comparison. Then also, uh, yeah, I think quite natural um, that is integrated is the ABAP uh, test cockpit. Um, in the meanwhile, we also have the, yeah, let's say, full configuration capabilities also available now in Eclipse. That means yeah, usually what you are doing, you uh, right click here. You've seen this already with the unit tests. This is under the run as menu. And now I can also um, execute an um, ATC run here. And then a small pop-up comes up and this is the current uh, variant that we are using in the system. And now what is, uh, yeah, rather new feature is that you can also display this variant um, in, in ATC directly. So you just use the open ABAP development object and now the variants, there are ABAP development objects, so transportable objects. And then you open this up here and then you directly see in the Eclipse environment, what are the checks which are configured um, with that variant, so you can also click that here, you see, okay, there are some checks in the other dictionary for sure, then the standard uh, uh, extended program checks. There's also the possibility to configure this also via say, uh, this, this approach here. So this is all, all available here in, in Eclipse. Then going back to my object here. You can also trigger this directly from the editor when you only want to check this object here. Okay, so yes. And then a new pop-up comes up here with the ATC problems.
Okay, in that case, there is no issue, which is good. When I do this on the uh, full package, again, say our test cockpit. And then you see here, okay, I have an, um, an error here coming from the extended syntax check. I navigate here, there. And then for sure in that case, I'm also, also using um, the uh, quick fixes here in order to, to solve the issue here. In that case, I want to create a new try catch clause here. And then you also see that this is automatically done by the editor. So you don't have to type something here. It's just uh, fixed by the editor. Good, activate this again. Look if the problem is solved here, you can do a recheck. Good, no findings here. Okay, last but not least, I also have shown you the possibility to execute, execute unit tests. Um, I can also do this um, in order to find out how good is my uh, code coverage. So I can also execute the unit tests in combination um, with, uh, with coverage. For that, I'm using this uh, small pop-up where I can uh, configure my unit test run. In that case, I want to additionally measure the, the coverage. Here you can also specify which kind of tests you want to execute. Um, okay, say execute. And then this new pop-up comes up where you see how good is the code coverage. That means, um, yeah, what of the uh, productive code is really uh, covered by a unit test, but it gets more, um, you know, when I activate, when I activate this here, then you directly see this um, in, in the source code. So the, the green areas um, here, um, the, 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 the methods which are, which are uh, tackled here, oh, something is, looks not so good here in that area, but I think you can imagine what's happening here. Okay, I'll switch over here to the statement coverage. Then this is what I'm expected here. Then you really see, okay, the red parts are currently not covered by the unit tests and the green parts uh, of my productive code are covered. You see for sure, I can do some improvements here. Uh, I, I do this for my uh, whole packages here where also, for example, demo classes are in there. Um, where I don't look too much on, on, on unit tests here, but here for my productive code, I'm already on a rather high uh, statement coverage here for sure. You can optimize this here. Good, last but not least, last thing that I want to show here, you've already seen that I also have some kind of a lock um, here. Oh, that's the wrong one, sorry. This is this one here. So in that case, um, it's a database table um, and you yeah, also have the wish to uh, um, inspect the uh, content of the database tables. For that, you can just press F8 here and then you directly jump to the data preview. The data preview in short is the SE60 um, in, in ADT. So you see all the, the objects here. And there are also nice uh, things here. For example, here I can uh, look, okay, how many entries I have with specific values here, um, which uh, is more or less here, a logging of all the operations that are triggered on my calculator. I can also specify uh, filters here. Um, I only want to see values um, of that operation, operation here. So it's, yeah, it's uh, very, very similar to the things. Uh, that you know from, from SC16. There's also another capability to use this uh, more of in, a, in a freestyle version that you can also specify the SQL statements directly in the SQL console here. So there you can really type in whatever select statement you want to execute. And then you also see the results here. This is also nice functionality to learn all about the new capabilities um, that we have 
um, in, in the SQL area. So you also know we have CDS, we have a lot of in that area. And this is also a very good playground to learn with all these new um, cap capabilities of the, of the SQL here. Okay, having said that, this was it already from my talk. I think I already covered all the basic things that you need so you can inspect the repository, I've shown you how you can navigate through the source code, how you can edit, really strong recommendation, use wherever possible the quick fixes, the quick assist, because this helps a lot uh, in your coding. And yeah, that's, I think we already or still have a few minutes time for questions. So therefore I want to hand over back to Søren, I think. Hello. Thank you, Thomas, for your great start uh, to our Channel One stream.